All right. Hello, Fortinos, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is August 19th, 2023, and I am starting right at the time I was hoping to go no later than. It's a, it's a later one than usual. 9.30 start time for me. I'll tell you, it has been a busy past few days. Uh, those that are a part of the Forum and Ministry Revealed. when uh, And for anybody that's new, when you hear me talk about the Forum and Ministry Revealed, you can click right here, go to ministryrevealed.com. You could type it in a search. You can click and view it under the videos in the description box. Um, but we have a, a link on there. In fact, here's the video right here, uh, the, uh, the, the website. You can go to the menu box right here. And you can come down here and go to the form. It'll take you a couple seconds to sign up. Uh, it's free. And uh, we've got people all over the world in there sharing all sorts of news, events, scriptures, studies, all sorts of things. And um, I had shared in the forum that on Thursday was my daughter's birthday. So it was a big deal. She turned 18 years old. So all growed up, as we like to say. And uh, so we went out for dinner, just our family for that. And then yesterday, Friday, was my father-in-law's big birthday. And uh, so we went out for, you know, they're Chinese. So they uh, we went out for dim sum and it was awesome. And then we went out for dinner because it was his big birthday, had some cake and everything else. And in the midst of all of this and today, and we're still not done, <clears throat> my wife uh, finally put her foot down. We've lived in this house for about seven years now. And her office and crafting area is downstairs. So she has one of the, the bedrooms is her office when she works part-time from home during the week. And she has a big open main area downstairs and that's where her crafting stuff is. And she's wanted to go upstairs, which is in an area we call the bonus room, which is a, a place built over the garage. And she's been wanting that for a long time, but you guys know the story, how it works that, you know, you're, you're oh we've been always expectant you know that well it's coming it's coming you know from 2017 and then we keep digging and searching we're trying to understand and discern these things and and with everything that's been revealed here it just we're, we were always always at that point and and this is something that i've been talking about recently right that that always being at the point and it, it's just so soon that we put things off and we put things off and we put things off but even though many don't yet want to accept it, but we have a year to go. The revelation hasn't changed, and I have now understood. I know we have a year to go. Um, am I hoping it's sooner and there's something I haven't understood? Absolutely, of course. It'd be foolish not to. However, I don't believe it's the case. I believe we've been able to reveal it through a number of uh, of scriptural evidences, with everything. So it's like we've got the picture, but now we got the big picture to be able to understand the year. That's always been the issue, is just the year. And now we've been able to prove that out. I believe we've been able to prove that out. Nothing is a thus saith the Lord. It's the revelation of diligently seeking his word and the spirit leading in all of it. And so <laughs> we've got a year to go. So with that, my wife says, No, I want to start making changes in the house. So Lo and behold, knowing we got a year to go, she wanted everything that was up in the bonus room. So she has like Lego stuff up there and my daughter's little, my, she had like an office for school up there. Well, my son has a games room in, in the other bedroom in the basement. So he keeps that as his game room. My wife's office becomes his bedroom. His upstairs bedroom becomes my daughter's office because she starts university in the fall. And now all the bonus room is everything that was my wife's downstairs is being brought up to the bonus room. Oh my goodness. I remember uh, a guy that used that did some moving for us several years ago. And he, he was a lean guy and he says he lost 200 pounds by becoming a mover. I mean, you could imagine all the physical labor and everything uh, involved in that. Man, I hadn't experienced that in a while. It's been up and down, three flights of stairs, back and forth. Thank goodness my son's 20 now, and and he's a fit, strong guy that could help me out because I'll tell you what, it's been three days, and uh, it looks like we still have another couple to go. So it's made this a later video and putting it together. And and I mean, this is, this is a big video, and I want to be sure 
to keep it within that range of give or take two hours. I don't want to be that three to three and a half hour range anymore. Um, but this is going to be uh, a big video. This is this is the one I was telling you guys about in Romans. We're going to spend some deep diving into Romans. Like, look, all of this, all of this is for us tonight. And I'm going to do my best to to go through everything, give the, some more detailed understanding and see what these word definitions are in many of these places. And man, so much of it was really eye-opening. And uh, just, you're going to see who it's addressed to. I mean, we all know, I mean, the, the church loves the book of Romans and absolutely they should because it's addressed to, to those in Christ and a group in Christ remaining. They're remaining for a portion here, and they're remaining for a portion there, and they're remaining for a portion there. It's a conversation of, of a remnant, even in this day and age, yet another remnant that will remain to help bring the rest in, and another final remnant right to the very end. Interesting. And that was something that I was touching on that, that I was saying I would bring about when I finally would get to this Romans video. And we're definitely not going to go into every chapter of Romans, but I think we're going to hit about a half dozen or so, uh, five, six, seven chapters, I can't remember, um, and, and show all the connections that we've understood throughout it along the way. It, it's so awesome. I mean, <laughs> we're blessed, guys, to the revelations that we have, that, that, that the Spirit has led us in. In this revealing of the open books, this is the kind of stuff that, I mean, you just think, wow, man, I, imagine trying to do what, what's been revealed here if we didn't have the concordance, if we didn't have it at our fingertips like we're able to have. It's awesome. It's so exciting. So that's what we're going to get into. But before we go into that, I'm going to spend a, a few minutes in particular with a video and then I'm going to spend a few minutes in um, uh, just touching on the the previous live show. So the last video we did, it wasn't this one. It was the live show here in relation to the Jubilee and this this incredible revelation of it. And like anything, when when a revelation comes to be understood, it it gets built into our repetitive cycle of understanding and making connections but it's only the beginning like it, it just got put together where we can now clearly see it so now i just i'm going to touch on it again a little bit just to make the point in the clarity of it so that people can understand what the jubilee is how it's counted and and what it really is a portion of in the next cycle as well meaning the next cycle of the next 50 year count. So to get started, as always, for anybody that's new, you can come to what's called playlist right here and come to this one right here. It's called the Revealed End Time Study Note Series. This is a video for anybody that's new to this ministry. You wanna go to at least the first four videos. The first video is a 22 minute intro to the next three videos that follow it. They are the key videos to understand, all right? They are the key. You're gonna see the differences in the gospels being revealed. Um, you know, there's always been an understanding that there's something that's mysterious that hasn't been understood for centuries, that there, there's stories that sound similar that you would think they're the same, but clearly have differences that are not the same. And one of them, for example, in the differences of the Gospels, this is just a simple one to jump off from, is when you see Christ before going to crucifixion, everybody knows that in Matthew, he was arrayed in scarlet. But in Mark, he was arrayed in purple. And in Luke, in the Synoptic Gospels, he was arrayed in a gorgeous robe. So gorgeous means white, radiant, beautiful. You see? So... You, you have something going on here within these differences. And we know that purple and scarlet are tribulation colors. Hello. But white isn't. White, beautiful, gorgeous robe is a bride, right? Is the white bride color. 
So the first will be last, the last will be first. Matthew, Mark, Luke. In the end of days is Luke, Mark, Matthew. You're going to find out that Luke is pre-trib, Mark is, is mid-trib, and Matthew is post-trib, the return of the Lord, feet down. So you have a taking, a taking, and a returning feet down. You have a taking to the third heaven pre-trib. You have a taking to paradise mid-trib, and you have a return feet down on the Mount of Olives. All three of them are true. And you're going to see that within this video series as well um, in this playlist. The other place you can come for this playlist is, again, by going to ministryreveal.com. We also have this stuff all broken down and so much more in the Ministry Revealed book. Uh, you can download it for free PDF. It's in like five languages. Um, you can just go to the book page. I don't know if you can click it and go to the book page. I think it is. Oh, here it is. You can go right to the book page. It's in five languages, downloadable. It's uh, for free in PDF. Uh, the audio, you can listen to it in audio there. Um, or if you like paperback or, or ebook, then you can always get it from Amazon. But either case, whatever works for you. Um, also, all the videos, all the links are here. But in relation to that intro, you can also come here at ministryrevealed.com. And when you come here, here's that first video. This is that 22-minute intro video. Download. So on our website also, our brother Jimmy that does our website, he's made it so easy. It's a one-click download. So you can download it to your phone, to your tablet, desktop, whatever it is, and you could save it and share it with others as well. There's the 30-minute about the uh, who the Gospels are speaking to. What you're going to come to next is once you realize these differences within the Gospels, you're going to realize there's a difference and a big difference within the discourses. And because everybody's focus is on Matthew, they don't realize the difference of Mark and the difference that's in Luke. And so they only think the tribulation is seven years. Unfortunately, they miss the first seven. The first seven Jews are, are destroyed. Jerusalem is destroyed. They're gone from the land for seven years while the tribulation on earth takes place for the world. The sleeping church that's still there, that isn't prepared, that wasn't fully in the spirit in Christ, it'll be their final chance to wake up. And then you have the set. Those are the seven years of seals. And then you'll have the seven years of trumpets. And before all that starts, there's a period that's called above. And that's 50 days. And with that starts the escape attacks on Israel and then Jerusalem. And then the 14 years, uh, the 14 years will begin. How did it all get missed? That's the next video. This is the third video in that series. And this is a big one. Those first two were 30 minute study videos just to give you some insight. And this one is the big one, about two hours, 45 minutes. And the reason it was all misunderstood that these things hadn't yet been understood is because everybody's foundation is from the gospel of Matthew, especially when it comes to prophecy. All right, that is the revelation. It'll blow your mind. And then from there, you can go into much deeper pieces, understand these discourses revealed and so much more. So you can do it here from the website. And of course, you can also do it from these videos here. Another thing I wanted to share with you guys is that um, uh, our brother, we call Uncle Jimmy, who, who takes care of our Facebook for us, um, he, he's pushed me to go in and, and learn a couple things and little ins and outs uh, with, sorry, and learn little ins and outs with YouTube and how to do things to help increase view, viewership and so forth. So one of the things I did, you'll notice, there's a watermark tab for subscribe. So anybody that's new, click here on that watermark and you can subscribe to the ministry. And the other thing I did is I've got an end card put at the end. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless your families. We will see you very soon. And don't forget, tomorrow, 6 to It'll 7 come in a few seconds. Mountain Standard Time, we will be, I will be with them on Tribulation Now, sharing the insights and the revelation. There you go. Pre, mid, and post. So at the end of all the videos, gospel. there's going to be the subscribe guys. button here, the newest video, we'll and the one that will always take you to the intro series is now going to be right there. So I wanted to share that with you guys as well. Um, you're going to see a lot, a lot of these little things to help increase, you know, uh, uh, viewership and subscription and so forth. 
And I'll most likely even get into uh, what's called shorts and doing clips of short things. Now, I'll do longer videos and I've got a program that will be able to take clips and we'll be able to post these in YouTube shorts. We'll be able to post them uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, and it'll be simple, great things that all of you guys can copy and share. They're only going to be anywhere from 15 to 30 second clips and uh, really easy to share and, and thought provoking pieces uh, to hopefully get more people to look. All right. So so see what happens when we've got this one more year to go. Things that we could have been doing along the way, but we're always kind of at the edge of our seat. Now, understanding there's time. Now we can make a push. Now we can ready ourselves. Now we can we can go out into the world and uh, and start sharing and, and preparing a larger group of people. So from there, I wanted to share this video with you, uh, almost eight minutes portion of it that I wanna share. This is a guy, <laughs> I should have paused it there, poor guy. Ah, you don't look bad, brother. Um, this is a guy who from the 60s um, did studying on the calendars and ended up spending like a huge portion. Wait till you hear how often <laughs> Wait till you hear how often this guy says our number. It'll blow your mind. But if you want to, you see, we haven't spent a lot of time in really digging in deep into the calendars. We don't have thousands of hours and, and years and years and years digging in in a commitment to understanding the calendars. That's what this guy has done. And I want you to hear about what he talks about. And <clears throat> what you're going to see is that no, it isn't always exactly the way the Hebrew calendar is. In most years, you'll see that the Hebrew calendar is correct, but in other years, it's not. But the majority is. And for the coming years that we're looking at, well, this next year, it also is correct. And you're going to see what I mean after you listen to what he has to say. And you guys can always go check this out. Torah Life Ministries uh, YouTube channel. It's a nine-year-old video. And you could always just type this into the search. And this guy's done all the work. So kind of makes sense, doesn't it, to listen to somebody who has this experience. So let's see what he has to say. Let me make sure the volume's up. Let me make sure. All right, I got my screen sharing, of course. What happened was when I was at the University of Arizona studying for a master's degree of mathematics, one day I was picking up at random the mathematical journal volumes and I picked up one volume and opened it up at random and lo and behold there was an article about the Jewish calendar. And I was so surprised to find an article on the Jewish calendar in the mathematics journal. It happened to be the journal that was published by Yeshiva University in New York City, in Manhattan. And when I looked at that article, all of a sudden some uh, unusual feeling came over me. And uh, I felt impressed in my head this thought, save this uh, and figure it out. You know what that's like, and right? so. I had a response to that thought that popped in my head. And my response was, well, for my Jewish schooling in New York City, in the synagogue environment, I knew that the calendar was a controversial subject. And my response in my head to this uh, feeling that overcame me, study this, was, well, I don't know if I can ever figure it out in terms of what it was originally. However, okay, I will try. And that was my feeling. And since 1967, I have been engaged in ever more study in relationship to the biblical calendar. It was a very unusual study that occupied thousands of hours. And if I had any inkling that I would wind up spending so many thousands of hours since that happened in 1967, I probably would have given up on the spot. But I had no idea that that would happen and I just let it flow. And I didn't have any predisposed thoughts one way or the other about it. And after 14 years of study, after buying several books on the subject, including Maimonides' uh, calendar study that he wrote sometime uh, a little bit before the year 1100, and after looking at books of all kinds with different opinions, after 14 years, in the summer of 1981, I finally came to a conclusion. And long before that, I had studied what the Karaites had written and the Karaite history and their thoughts on the calendar and seeing it in history. Actually, there were three groups of Karaites, and they disagreed with one another on the calendar. And I looked and saw what their three positions were. Only one of those three groups has a website promoting their idea of the calendar, and they don't tell you that historically there were two other groups of Karaites that disagreed with them on the calendar. However, I looked into all that history, saw all of their opinions, studied all the arguments, pro and con of all the positions, and after the 14 years of study, uh, I developed an opinion on the subject. Now, to put it into a nutshell of only a few sentences, here is the conclusion that I arrived at after 14 years of study. The month, the biblical month begins with the sighting of the new moon, from where the priesthood 
was told to dwell. They were told to dwell in 48 cities in ancient Israel. That was their dwelling place. And therefore, I believe that the sighting of the new crescent to start the month should be from the area where those 48 cities where they were commanded to dwell forever. And that's where it is. Now, if you live somewhere else at a time, for example, 200 years ago, before Alexander Graham Bell uh, developed the, the modern communication of telephone and so forth, before the telephone, before the telegraph, we would have no choice but to base it on what we could see wherever we are as far as the new crescent of the moon. However, now that we know what people could see in Israel for the New Crescent, that is the thing to go by in harmony with the priesthood that had the responsibility from Numbers 10.10 to blow two silver trumpets on the day of sighting the Crescent that the new month had begun. It was their responsibility, the priesthood, the Levitical or Aaronic priesthood. Now, as far as when you know the first month begins, that's a very interesting story. The basics of the calendar are in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. In Genesis 1.14, it says, The Almighty created the lights in the heavens to determine several things to separate the day from the night, to determine the festivals. The word for festivals is moed in the plural in Hebrew. And the festivals, therefore, are to be determined by the lights in the heavens. And it should be a clear-cut thing, not something where people have to guess. And the very last word is years, shanaim. The, the Hebrew word shana is year. And the plural, years, is the last word in Genesis 1.14. And those lights in the heavens have to determine the years to separate one year from the next year. And just to give you the conclusion briefly, the vernal equinox is the marker. It's a sign of the sun, an annual sign of the sun. There's four annual signs of the sun, the two equinoxes and the two solstices. And only one of them occurs during the time when the grains begin to ripen. And that time when the grains begin to ripen in Israel is the time that approximates when the vernal equinox occurs. And those are what speak, spoken of, the heavenly bodies in the sky that the Almighty created to determine the festivals. So when that vernal equinox occurs, if the New Crescent occurs on that same day. That is the first of the months of the year. Otherwise, when the next time you see that New Crescent, that starts the first month. See, there's no calculation. In the Genesis 1.14, it says those lights directly. That is what determines the calendar. It's not a prediction, and it's not through mathematics. So that when they all go to one central place, which became Jerusalem, to keep the festivals, when they arrived there on the 14th day or before, in order to celebrate the Passover, they had to know that this was the first month, and they had to come throughout all the land to that one central place. And so they had to know before they started leaving that that was the first month and not the 13th month. And since they had to know at the beginning of the month, whether it was the first or the 13th, that's why at the beginning of the month, the, the vernal equinox would have to occur first. So they would say, aha, this is the first month at this new crescent, and therefore we know that now is the time to get our wagons ready, to get our clothes packed, and to go to the one central place where Yahweh has placed his name so that we can keep the Passover and the Days of Unleavened Bread and travel and know that when we get there, this is the first month. Besides the so if you understood what he was saying there, <laughs> he says it is the vernal equinox. So it is the spring equinox that comes first. So you must have the spring equinox before you have the sighting of the new moon. Look at what we had in 2023. You had the spring equinox and then you had well, the crescent probably in here somewhere. Okay, so it was after the vernal equinox. This is how they would know. Now, if you go back, excuse me, a few years, you'll find some that they have Nissan one before the spring equinox. It, according to all of this guy's studies, all of his research, thousands of hours, decade, uh, uh, 14 years studying it, and then some after since then, He's he's been able to show and he's fully confident, having been led in this to dig into it, that it was necessary for them to understand where they were in the year with no math, with no calculations. There, there was no watches. They would look up. They understood the season by the equinox. And from the equinox, they would look for the first crescent. And when they saw that first crescent after the equinox, they knew it was month one and they could wet ready their wagons and make their way to Jerusalem for Passover time. Kind of makes sense, right? Pretty simple, isn't it? <laughs> so what we see in 2023 is it was correct. Uh, I went back to 2017 as well. And 2017 was also correct. And so is 2024. 2024, clearly they have a second Adar. And good thing they did because... Second Adar started on the 11th of March, you know, a full 10 days or so before the equinox. So it was correct, which would make Passover or Nissan 1 at the first crescent 
after the vernal equinox. So I think the way it works with the Jews is they've set it where the, um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, where it has to be the full moon or something has to be after the equinox. So that's why he he says that through all of his studies and going all this historical stuff that he says it is the start of the, uh, uh, with the crescent of the moon after the equinox. And I believe what the Jews do on their calendar is they say that the full moon of Passover must be after the equinox. And so I believe that's the way they do it. Because uh, if they were doing it the way this guy does, you would see that there's uh, every once in a while, there's a year here and there where they're off. Now, like I said, the good news for us, if there's something that we've missed in 2023, well, the calendars are correct. If you go back to 2027, the calendar was correct. So it did happen at the Feast of Trumpets with the Revelation 12 sign. Okay. It was right at that time. It wasn't a month off because they should have added. So when we go to 2024, where these months are is precisely where they should be. So we've got somebody who did that work for us. That's thousands of hours in over 14 years doing it. So it's way more understanding than I have. And if you want to go and seek and understand this out more, you can always go to that video, download, uh, go to that website. That I guess they, as far as I know, they still maintain it. And you can all see for yourselves uh, the breakdown there. All right. So I wanted to share that with you guys as well. Let me close that one off. I think I'm going to save that one just in case. And now what I wanted to do was go back in here and touch on this Jubilee. Let me bring it up over here instead. So to understand this Jubilee cycle, just real briefly, in, in future videos, we'll, I'm sure over the next year, we'll dig into it more. And, you know, like so many other things, I've probably said this a hundred times over the years. It, it's like anything else. When it first comes into revelation and into the understanding, it blows our mind. It's We can now see it. We've got it. It connects with all the other pieces of scripture that that should be surrounding it and where it should be. And then it becomes part of our understanding. Like the Lord coming on heavenly Mount Zion, right? That, that mountain carved without hand, that stone that becomes a great mountain. I mean, that's, that's the end of the sixth year of seals. And when we first understood that, it, 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 was, it was almost unfathomable that that happened. And now it's like, hey, yeah, remember at the end of the sixth seal, that's the Lord coming uh, for the rapture group in the seventh year. And, you know, it just becomes part of our conversation. Well, that's what's happening still here. We've just brought about the Jubilee. We've understood that the Jubilee year is after the 14th year. It is the 15th year. We've always understood it. Seven easy years or the, the seven years of preparing the bride, seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets. The final big picture is the 22nd year or because this is still like daily life in the, what we call the quote unquote easy years, it would be the 15th year. So the 22nd is the same as the 15th. What is it also the same as? Seven years, seven years, seven years, seven, 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 seven makes it the 50th. Okay, the Jubilee. So what is this Jubilee? Well, we've always known it's coming after that final 14th year. The issue was we could never, we, we didn't have the ability to nail down absolutely when this year would be. That's why from like 2018 with the rest of the world, when the rest of the world stopped looking for the 70th year because it couldn't they they couldn't have they couldn't understand it we diligently continued to seek it but we were continuously able to go from 2018 19 2020 2021 to 22 to 23 but now by the fall feast or the 50 days before feast of trumpets in 2024 i want you to understand this we, I don't believe we can now push this up one more year and then one more year and then one more year and then one more year because this missing piece that puts an end to it, puts an end to it. 
this this missing piece, this final Sabbath, puts an end to it. Because the 70 years of Jerusalem from 1967, from the year 67 Feast of Trumpets to 68, look what happens. There's the end of 70. This is absolutely Jeremiah 25. At the end of 70 years is the day of the Lord, which is the year of his wrath, which is the crushing of the grapes. He's returned feet down on the Mount of Olives and will complete this year himself like Zechariah 14, like Isaiah 34, like Isaiah 61, like Luke 4. And, and what was so important for us in relation to Luke 4? Why can we now say we cannot move this anymore? Well, it's all because we know and we've known about this for several years, Luke in order. This connects, Luke 1 is connected to pre-trib. Luke 2 is connected to the 40 days of the Son of Man when he returns from the seven-day wedding. Luke 3 is connected to when he returns at the end of the six-year seals. And Luke 4 is when he is connected to when he comes after the end of the sixth year of trumpets. And so these are things we've known that we've taught on for so long. And then knowing the timing of him saying to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, and he closed the book, that it's now been fulfilled in their years, but he never completed it because it was a future event, yet at the same time saying it's fulfilled in their in their ears because in the was, the is is being fulfilled. And in the was and in the is, prophecy is being revealed to us. And so when he's saying this, we know it's after he's been tempted by Satan when he comes down at that final year, when he binds Satan up for the thousand years. That's the picture going on here. And he destroys the enemy. And now he's victorious and he's being glorified of all. It's over. It's come to the end as the picture of being the end of that 14th year. And now he's saying the acceptable year of the Lord. So now at the end of that 14th year, which is something we've known that Luke 4 is talking about in the prophetic picture is him fulfilling this final year right here. We come to find out with Ivan's help as well that this is a prophetic declaration of the Jubilee. So when is he declaring it? At the end of the 14th year after defeating the Satan, after defeating Satan, binding him up, the, the grapes of wrath have happened, and he's declaring it in that typology at the end of the 14th year. What happens next? Well, it was a declaration of the Jubilee. So if we now know this is the 14th year and this is the end which, ha which will take place after 70 years of Jerusalem, then there's no choice. We can't move this anymore because we now know there's a declaration in Luke, in order, after he's defeated Satan and destroyed the enemy, of him declaring right there the Jubilee now being at hand. We can't change that. But I want you also to understand what a Jubilee year is. You see, we know that this is a Jubilee. So what is this the end of? 49 years, right? So remember like this, there would have been seven, 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 seven. Then the seven years were in. The seven years of seals, the seven years of trumpets. At the end of this 14 years or that it's with or 21, it's also a picture of the end of 49 years. So when the 49 years are done, it's the final Jubilee. Well, what is the Jubilee? Whoops, what is the Jubilee in this picture? It's year one again. You see, it's no different than here. It's year one of another cycle of 49 and the 50th, you see, because it's at the end of 49. So this is the end of 48. This is the start of 49 at the Feast of Trumpets. And at Elul 29, it's the end of the 49th, which is the start then of the 50th. And at the end of the 50th, and then it goes 51st. So what is the 50th? It's the first year of the next seven of the next seven times seven to another jubilee. Let me show you what I mean. Here was a jubilee as we were showing 
1989. So from 89 Feast of Trumpets to 90 Feast of Trumpets is was the true Jubilee. The true Jubilee. And this is why people say, well, how can you know it's the true Jubilee? Well, because we know this is, and now we know that we can't move this anymore because we know it's after 70 that the Lord fulfills it. And when he fulfills it, he's making a declaration that the Jubilee follows. And it's all connected to the reality we're living in at the end of 70 years for Israel or for Jerusalem. But we took this 70, the, the, I mean, this 50 year Jubilee count all the way back to Christ. And when he was making the declaration in Luke chapter four, in the is of when he was here, he was making the declaration right in this time right here. And what happened to be the next year? The Jubilee. The Jubilee. So what is it with the Jubilee? Let me just show you. This means right here, this would have been from ninth, fall of uh, uh, Feast of Trumpets 1988 to 1989 Feast of Trumpets or Elul 29. That would have been the 49th year start to the 49th year end. So the Jubilee is the first year of the next 49. So the 50th is also the first year, you see, of the next seven. It's not a year that stands on its own. It is the beginning of the next 49 to 50th. Everything is seven, 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 seven. It doesn't break a cycle of seven to say 50 and then do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven again. The Jubilee is the 50th in a new cycle, and it is also the first year of that new cycle. Okay? So hopefully that clarifies it for you. You can just see it right here. Okay? It's the Jubilee, and it's also year one of the next Shemitah cycles of seven. There's our final seventh Shemitah, 49th year start, 49th year end, and Jubilee beginning year one. And what is the Jubilee? New beginning. You see? It's a new beginning, the release of their debts. And what do we know happens? We know that those who were three and a half years in the wilderness, right? They flew on the wings of an eagle for the final three and a half years while Satan had his run. And then Jesus destroys the enemies and all that came against them. And then what happens? Bang, the restoration. They'll all be brought back just like uh, um, uh, Ezekiel. Right, for little the end of forty seven, but all of uh forty uh, eight. That's when they all come back. Their debts are washed. Everything. Everybody will get their portions of land again. This is this is where it should be. And it has to be at the end of the forty ninth year, which is the year that the Lord destroys the enemy. And that can't happen until seventy years are complete. Hello, when are these seventy years complete? After the two and a half year reign that Satan has. There's that final 14th year. You see what I'm saying? There, there, this is why I say we can't. I, I don't see how it could be this year. Especially understanding the Revelation 12 sign as well. Or adding into it the sign of the Revelation 12 sign that was seven years earlier. So... Hopefully that helps clarify uh, for everybody a little bit more as well. Now, let's start moving into Romans. And let's see some of these deep things going on in Romans. So we're going to start in Romans chapter 1 in verse 5. Uh, yeah, verse 5. Um, let's see what it says. So it says, by whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience of the faith among all nations for his name. Okay, so again, among all nations for his name. That's the world. Among whom ye are also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Called to be saints. Now, you see what's happening. There, there's a group here called to be saints. But what do we know about the, the world? You see, what do we know about all nations? Well, if we go into Revelation, 
we know when it comes to the seven churches, there's all these groups that says, to he that overcometh, right? Overcometh, overcometh, overcometh. And I believe what this picture is of them that overcometh is they're all a part of the pre-trib group. Remember, the majority are Gentiles, but there's going to be some Jews, right, that are in Christ Jesus that are going to be pre-trib as well. So there's there are saints now, and this is what I was telling you at the beginning. There's there there's a saint group now, or there's there's a group now, and you're going to see this as we go throughout. That even talks about there's even a remnant now. Yet throughout this whole thing, you're going to see he's also talking about a remnant during the time of seals. So we know there's a portion that relates to the overcomer group that that goes pre-trib. But we also know that there are saints during the time of seals. Right? So what is this about a called group of saints? Well, we know that this, this is an is. Because we are still living. So for those that don't understand that, there's the was, the is, and the is to come. The was is the Old Testament from the beginning until Christ, and then from Christ until the moment of the escape. So we are still living in the is. And from the moment of the escape forward is the is to come. So in the is, it's to all nations, right? Jews have been blinded for our sakes. We're to make them jealous in it. And he will ultimately make them jealous by the escape and so forth. But this is also an is to come. So within this, the way we can understand and know that it's also a, a picture within it in the is to come is because during seals, it's still the age of grace. There is still the age of the church during the time of seals. Because the seals time is quote unquote Mark's time. It, it's the the quote unquote sleeping church, those that aren't spirit filled in Christ. They might go to church once in a while, they, you know, but they don't spend time in prayer. They're not repentant. They they don't seek them. They just go to church, they listen once in a while, they feel better, and then off they go. That's a lot of the church, let's not forget, right? So we know that they're going to have their portion with the world as a whole that's going to go through the portion of seals. That is the portion of the nations, the world. That is Mark. Whereas Judah, that is um, trumpets. Okay? So at the time to the end of seals is still the church age. The dividing of time comes at the end of seals. When that rapture and that portion of seals is over, it's the dividing of time. Let me show you that. A lot of people don't know this uh, in Daniel. So we find three places in scripture. It's a little bit, I wasn't planning on going here, but I let the spirit lead every single time. That's in my prayers before we start. So we know here in Daniel chapter seven, okay, we see this seals picture right here. The, the lion who is Assad that comes first, right? The, the Syrians. Then we have the bear. Then we have the leopard. Then we have the beast. And this is when Antichrist gets his power to continue 42 months. That'll go to the end of six years of seals. And then you've got the Ancient of Days who did come. You see those standing, um, uh, those thousands of thousands ministering unto him. And you see the 10,000 times 10,000 that stood before him. These are the, the pre-trib group. This is the group that was taken already. And then we see uh, that the Antichrist, this is where the beast is killed. We know he's killed at the end of the at the time frame of the end of the sixth seal. We see that uh, the Son of Man, right, is given dominion and glory. And then listen to what it says. It goes on to explain it and break it down to stamp the residue with the feet. You see, that's during the time of seals, the second half approximately of seals. And it says, I beheld and the same horde made war with the saints. Ah, there's a picture of the saints, you see. So that same one made war with the saints. That's again going back to the beast. Now, and then it says, uh, um, until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to uh, was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints should possess the kingdom. So you see, even though in this 
in this is that we're in, there are saints now, of course. But there are clearly saints in the is to come. I'm going to come back to this in a second because I'm talking about another thing with that dividing of time. But I want to show you this with the saints. You see, here it is. Here's that beast. So when the beast comes, he'll take over and have the power of the lion, the leopard, the bear. <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, the leopard, the bear, and uh, yeah, and the lion. And we know he's going to go what? What's he going to do? He's going to make war with the saints. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Here is, in Revelation 13, 10, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So clearly, there's a portion representing now with saints, and there's a portion represented in the is to come with saints. And in relation to the other piece I was talking about, this portion that goes to the end of seals that still relates to the saints, just as we're seeing it here in Daniel, it also tells us about this dividing of time, okay? And a lot of people don't know this one. In Daniel 9, 25, <clears throat> and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High uh, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. This, this is so fascinating because, you see, there's no comma. There's no comma. What the heck is that all about? And a lot of people, I mean, I've said this before, my wife would laugh hysterically at me when I realized there was no comma or there was a comma with the word and or there was no word and and only a comma. To, to recognize these things and to understand what they're saying is, is crazy for me. I am no English major whatsoever. So what happens here is a lot of people that think, a lot of people think that this, a time and times and the dividing of time, they think it means the same thing as Daniel chapter 12, verse seven, when it says, uh, and swear by him that liveth forever that, shall, that it shall be for a time, comma, times, comma, and a half. They think this means the exact same portion of time. Well, where's another one? If you go to Revelation chapter 12, we see another one in verse 14 when they fly away into the wilderness, like I was just telling you a moment ago. It says, uh, where she shall be nourished for a time, comma, and times, comma, and half a time. So if we go to this, if we go to the uh, chart here, what you see is... In Revelation chapter 12, it's a full three and a half years that we were talking about a moment ago. <clears throat> that at mid-trumpets, when the pit is opened and hell breaks loose, these guys are going to be taken away on the wings of an eagle, and they're going to be taken away for the entirety of time, comma, and times, comma, and a half. It's one plus two plus a half. That's a total of three and a half years. So they're taken to the place of safety until what? Until the Lord completes that final 14th year, that day of the Lord that is the year of his vengeance. And then they'll be brought back at the Jubilee when they will all be given their division and their portions of land. But in Daniel 12, it is this same period of time, but it's not the entirety of it. Because in Daniel... Chapter 12, it's time, comma, times, comma, and a half. There's no and between time, comma, times. So there's no addition. So it just means one, two, and a half. So one, two, plus a half. So from the same half year of this year to the end of the 13th. So Satan is going to have, when the pit is open, two and a half years. Like you read about in Revelation 12, when they fly away for the final three and a half, Satan's time is going to be two and a half before the Lord comes and fulfills this final 14th year. So that two and a half is a portion of the final three and a half. 
But the one that we're talking about in Daniel 7, that is the dividing of time, that has the word and but has no commas, is a different one. And that one relates to the end of seals. That one relates to the end of the times of the saints. This brings it to the end of seals, the end of the time of the beast. They're being killed and destroyed. So when Antichrist gets his power to continue 42 months, so about three and a half from about two and a half years in, he's going after the saints. Here's the patience and the wisdom of the saints, right? When he makes war against them. Until what? The Lord comes at the end of the sixth seal, destroys them, and then these guys are going to what? Receive their kingdom. <coughs> what is the portion for these guys? Paradise. So this, the end of seals, is the dividing of time. And why is it the one that is the dividing of time? Because it is the end of the Gentile age. It is the end of the portion for the world. You see, that's what's going on here. And a lot of people haven't understood that. They've, they've piled all three of them. We see it all the time. It always happens in threes. It's unbelievable how everything is connected in threes. And just like that, all three of those are portions of different portions of time. It's, it's awesome to see, but there's only one way to see it. You need to understand who the Gospels are first speaking to, and you need to understand that the truth is 14 years and that 50 days above. That's, that's the entirety of the revelation that opens all of these things up for us to be able to understand. Uh, let's see, what else do I have here? Uh, in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. All right, because it's to both. Okay, now let's go into uh, Romans 1. Uh, let's start in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Okay who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Wait a second, you see that? Because that which may be known of God is rendered apparent, is made known in them. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world is clearly seen. Remember this word creation, guys? This original formation? We see all of these groups in the story of Romans. It is so incredible. What do I mean by these three groups? This group right here. The spirit group, the light group, and the flesh group. It's such, you guys know this revelation. It's an incredible revelation that goes all the way back to the creation. We're going to touch on it a little bit as we come to those points. Luke is that, is that gap theory creation of Genesis 1, verse 1 and 2. The light group is the creation of days, that to the father of days, that would be as thousands of years. And the Matthew group is the representation of flesh, which was from Adam, which are the 6,000 years that we're living in right now. And then the 7,000th is their promise. So you have a spirit group, a light group, and a flesh group. But right now, all three of us are living in the portion of flesh, which is to the Jews. This is why we're to lift up the Jews. This is why they've been blinded for our sakes. Because a group of light has to be removed as the time comes to an end. The light group then has to be dealt with. And then all that's left is the flesh group. You see, so we're all living in flesh suits right now. But we're not all living by the flesh. Hopefully, we're all living by the spirit, even though we're in the portion of the flesh. But there's also a group that is living or is, is quote unquote, if you will, destined or was portioned for the light group. And they're also living in the flesh. 
Can can we be the spirit, the light, living in the flesh at the same time, be all three? Sure. Are there some that aren't spirit, but that are a portion of the light group that are living in the flesh? Absolutely. You see, but the flesh group is the group that's been blinded for our sakes. So when the portion of the pre and the portion of the mid are gone, which are both going to the kingdom of God, these guys have the kingdom of the of of um of heaven, which is their promised millennial reign on earth. It's incredible stuff. <laughs> Absolutely incredible to see it and to understand it. So what is this creation portion? Let's let's read a bit more. And in fact, let, let's go to another portion. Let's go see where we see this portion uh, in relation to the, the creation and the creature and so forth. Okay. So again, in Romans 1.20, it says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So all those that were part of this thing called creation, this 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 creature created in that creation, there's no excuse for them. Okay? That's what it's saying. Because that, when they knew God, hello, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Okay, we all know that this is the, this is the connection to all of this stuff in creation. So we're going to touch on it a bit here because this is where it really talks about these things. But wait until you see what else is in this. It's really exciting. So there's a group in the creation that are called the creature portion. We all know what that is for those that have been around for a while. We're going to cover it, but you're going to see within this another group. You're going to see a group that we know is also part of, quote unquote, the church. It's a group that's part of, we would say that, first creation in the gap theory that it that is part of the spirit of god that we often see and we've talked about many times and we'll touch on tonight in romans 8 and you're going to see them right here so in one in romans 1 23 it then says so there's that group that was vain and 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 they turned and did these things against god and it says and changed the glory of the incorruptible god into an image made like unto uh, made like to corruptible men and to the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Look at this. So they changed what? The glory. Check this out. They changed the glory. What's the glory? Honor, glorious. Wait until you see this connection we're going to show later with dignity. Who, who is this group? Look at this. Remember the to be accounted? You see? So, so there's a group that within this, this glory portion, which is represented by those in the spirit, the glory portion is that group represented in the spirit. And there was a group that changed some of them. You see, there was a group in this creation of light that 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 got deceived because they didn't know any different. It, it wasn't even their own fault because they knew no bet. They didn't even know better. However, we can see God telling them they knew of God. They knew of God, but ended up becoming vain in their own ways, and that had to do with the corruption. That came in Genesis 1, right? We see it right here. In fact, let's go to it. In Genesis 1, let's look at these words. We'll come back to this accounted in glory. 
here is this beginning that we always talk about. So a lot of people say, well, what do you mean Trinity? There's no Trinity in the Bible. It doesn't exist. You know, okay, it's just a word. It just means three. Okay, there's this, this Trinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You're going to see this. So if you've ever wondered and said, well, no, Jesus is God the Father. Well, you're not going to be able to say that when you see these things. Is Jesus God the creator? 100% absolutely he is. Is he God the Father? Definitely no. You see, but between the three of them with the Holy Ghost, there, there's, there's no separation. They're in perfect unison. When you go to heaven, Jesus is going to be beside the Father. You see, there, there, there are three different beings. And people say, well, show me. It's right here. It's in the first two verses of the entire Bible. In the beginning. Who is the beginning? Jesus Christ is the beginning. This is the first, as in the Feast of First Fruits, from Leviticus 23. There is only one <clears throat> Feast of First Fruits, First Fruits. And that is the one without leaven. That was only Jesus. So what do you have? In the beginning, so in Christ Jesus, God created. In Jesus, the Father created. You see? Because the Father gave everything to the Son. And then you go to verse 2, and it says, And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the waters, upon the face of the waters. Who do you have? The Son, the Father, and the Spirit, right there in the opening two verses of the gap theory creation. This is the portion, this right here <clears throat> represents the Luke group. This represents, even that 50 days, that above portion is represented by this. The, those seven years, it's represented by this. Those easy years, it's represented by this. There, it's actually even a mystery of the first 7,000 years if there was time back when this was taking place. What's the second group? Light. So what was he first? Spirit. Then what was it? Light. And then, of course, Genesis 2 is flesh. Spirit, light, and flesh. So you're going to want to remember this as we get to Romans 8 for newer people. Part of this gap theory, this first creation portion, is the spirit, and it was what? The spirit of God was there. You're going to see who are those that have the spirit of God. And what did Jesus come to do? Well, Jesus then became light, just like John 1 says. And when he became light, what was he coming to do? He came, and he came to shed his light on the world. Who's the world? The Mark group. Right, Those that aren't in Christ spirit-filled, but will wake up and come to him in the is-to-come portion of seals. The saints that are still to come in that portion too. But look what happens to this group where Jesus becomes light. He, so he's made into light here. And so what do they do? Well, they're making them in their image, which is light. So this is the creation portion of light. But look at what it said. So God created... Uh, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, after our resemblance, after our likeness. You see, to resemble a similitude. And God created man in his own image, right? Male and female. So image, likeness, this, this created group, part of this creation what, what was it just talking about here in Romans? We see right here this creation group, right? This part of the creation and this group that's in it that that became vain. And one of the one of the wordings is especially an idol, image, vain show, right? They they got corrupted by this other group of angels that were there in this creation. They were part of it. They, this was a light group. This was a light. These were light beings. 
And so what ended up happening is a group changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. See? Image, resemblance, a likeness. You see? They changed it from the likeness of the Father into this corruptible image. Well, who were some of them then? It's like now, doesn't everybody, doesn't everybody in the church, everybody in the world have a chance to be a part of that, that gap theory, that, that uh, spirit creation? Can anybody come to Christ, confess the Lord, change their life, and be repentant and loving and diligently seek him? Have be spirit-filled? Be part of this glory portion? Be part of this glory portion, which has the portion of dignity, which you'll see later, which has to be accounted. So it would seem that that they were all part of this group, but in that creation, from light, from spirit, now to light. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. We know the accounted, don't we? We know that the accounted worthy is right here in Luke chapter 21. And the word accounted worthy only shows up twice. It, the word shows up four times, but it's only used twice as accounted. But the definition is used four times. Look at the wording. And we're looking for this. Be accounted. Wait till you see what I found with this. This is one of those fun new little nuggets. In Luke 21, 36, this is the pre-trib, by the way, guys. You all know it. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Look at what it says. That you may be accounted. So who is this portion that represents glory? Those who are part of the be accounted. Well, that is precisely what we say. This pre-trib group are the be accounted portion, are the be accounted worthy portion of the pre-trib. We know them also from Luke chapter 20. This is the other place where we find it. But they, so this is the, the story of the woman with seven husbands and so forth. In Luke 20 verse 35, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world. You see? So what is who is this group that gets to be accounted worthy? They're the same ones of the pre-trib of Luke chapter 21, 36. And we know that there's a come and the resurrection of the dead, meaning a comma and which is why it was a great intro portion to bring that in with the comma and in the in the um, Daniel and Revelation, because what you come to see is these are two separate groups of people, but they're together. Okay, it's like the addition when you have a comma and the word and there's a separation, meaning there's two different portions, but they're added together. So. You have a group going pre-trib that are the accounted worthy. And you have another group that is going to be a part of the resurrection of the dead. And we know who they are, and we'll touch on them as we usually do, or as we often have, because they are a portion that are a remnant chosen being sent back or sent to Jerusalem that will be the workers that will follow the lamb for 40 days and will be his light sent out as his remnant during the time of seals to help the saints. To help bring in the saints, to help bring in the great multitude rapture. Some of them are going to die along the way. And we're going to see to what extent some of these guys are going to be sent to work. You're going to see where another portion is going to be reserved for them even right to the end to help out. It's awesome. 
So we've covered this before. You guys know that this is the pre-trib group, the accounted worthy, Luke 21, 36, and the comma and relate to the Luke 24, the, the, the Priscilla's Aquilas of Romans 16. Of course, we'll end there. And of course, they are the representation of uh, the, the Church of Smyrna. That remnant group, that group that will put their necks on the line, it's the same group. So look at who you see. Be accounted. So these guys as well are a portion of these guys that are going pre-trip. But they're being chosen out as a remnant portion to remain to work for the Lord. Because if they weren't there, there would be nobody shedding the light during the time of seals to bring in the great multitude at the end of seals. Okay? I'm going to show you something. Check this out. I did a search on be accounted. I did a search just so you guys could see. It's not in Luke. I mean, it's not in Mark. When we're talking synoptic gospels, it's not in Luke. It's not in Mark. And we know what this often means when we see this type of thing. And we're going to see it when we go back into Romans when it comes to creation and this creature portion. So let me show you something. We understand these in Luke. Uh, Isaiah, there, there's a bit of context there. But I'm going to show you Psalms 22 because it is awesome. Psalms 22. Oh, man, wait till you see when we get to something in Isaiah, in what something in the New Testament leads us to go see in Isaiah. Guys, what you're what you're going to see is the theme throughout all of this is a remnant, a remnant, a remnant. That without this remnant, there would be nobody to save these other people. It's incredible. It's connected to the light. So even though they're the spirit group, they're going to be given the light of the Lord over his group that he came for, which is the light, that paradise group. It's awesome. So let's see, Psalms 22. Psalms 22. So if you go read Psalms 22, we know this is about the Lord, all right? We know it's about the Lord, him being pierced. Uh, see, compassed by dogs, sword delivered. Watch this. In the end of Psalms 22, verse 30 and 31. Actually, maybe. Yeah, you'll get it right here anyways. Uh, 30 and 31. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation they, who are the they? The seed. They are the seed. Do you remember what happens to the seed, brothers and sisters? What happens to a seed? A seed has to fall to the ground. A seed has to fall to the ground to bring many more. What are the seeds? What are the remnants going to be doing? Well, some of them will be beheaded. They'll be the light. They'll willingly put their necks on the line. They're not going to say, hey, take me, take me, put my neck on the line. No, they're going to be bringing the great multitude in and the greatest revival in human history in the midst of seals. But they will willingly put their necks on the line because they're what? Well, they're a part of the be accounted worthy, but they're the remnant seed being left behind to bring in the multitude. Let's, let's look at this. Okay seed the fruit okay like the first fruits as well a seed shall serve him it shall be accounted to the lord for a generation they shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people you see it's this seed who is a group of people who are be accounted who are going to help this generation, this final generation, declare the Lord unto them. Isn't that awesome? This is from something we knew 
was connected to Luke's group. All this through through that connection in Romans. And we know again who they are. Right? Here they are. Those who put their necks on the line. What does it say about them? It says, da, 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 where are we? Church of Smyrna. Okay. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. See, don't be afraid. <laughs> Remember this. You're going to see this theme throughout the whole thing. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days, but be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. There's only one group. That is not heard of the second death, and you guys all know it. It's at the millennial reign after Satan's been bound for a thousand years. They never what? They never worshiped his image, right? They never bowed down to the Antichrist, to the image of Baal, right? Same typology. They're going to be resurrected to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years as kings and priests, right? They're going to be part of the first resurrection. This first resurrection is is the promise that all of Israelites had. Daniel is told to wait until the end. We know Abraham is, is waiting in one area for the final day because all of these guys were waiting for the millennial reign, for their promise at the resurrection. But this group of remnant workers from Luke are also going to be a part of it. And they're going to be priests and kings ruling and reigning with them. It says right here in Revelation 20, verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. You only read of that for those who are putting their necks on the line as the Priscilla's and Aquila's, the workers during the time of seals. It's awesome stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. Let's go back to Romans. We're still in one. <laughs> Good thing we're not doing the whole book. All right. Let's go back to Romans. So you see, now you can see this glory part. They are part of this be accounted. You see, th this is why it was so fascinating. You do a search on be accounted, connected to those that are the portion of glory that you're going to see is even more significance as we go further, that this is a group also from among them, just like we saw the group that gets to go pre, but a portion from among them that are chosen what? That are received. Chosen to go out and to proclaim him. You see, it's a picture in the was, a picture in the is, revealing is to come. Who are they going to go save? Who are they going to wake up during this time of seals? These guys. These guys. Listen to what it says. Back to Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 24. Where, wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature. There he is again. Who served the creature, who is part of what? The creation. It's the same word. So this creature became worshiped more than the creator. Who is this creature? Well, lo and behold, you do a word search on this. We've shared this one in the past. You do a word search on this. Here it is right here, 2937. Guess where it shows up? Mark, Mark, Mark. Remember the significance of these things? When something that, that you're digging into and you go and search these words and it's only in Luke or it's only in Mark or it's only in Matthew. There's significance in understanding these things. Like we just saw with the be accounted or the accounted worthy. Two portions of people, pre-trib and a remnant chosen 
to remain as his seed to go and spread his light. Who are they going to spread the light to? The creation. The creatures from the creation. What creation? Genesis chapter 1, in the days that started when the Lord, when the Father made the Son light. This is, this is that group for Christ Jesus. These are the seven days that are unto the Father as years. So days as thousands, comma, and thousands as days to the Father. Which means, as you heard me say, the gap theory would have been to the Father like seven days. But to us, if there was time then, it would have been 7,000 years. But it's a small picture as the Luke group, where it, it ties into 50 days, like Luke's discourse. It, it ties into the seven years. It's a picture of the first seven days in a mystery, the first 7,000 in a mystery if we were in time. And then from the light begins his creation of days, as, of course, uh, 2 Peter 3, 8 says, as I just said, days as thousands, comma, and thousands of days. Which means if there was time here, these seven days would have been to us 7,000 years, but to the Father they were days. And this was the creation of the portion of light, the mark group, the, the purple, the world, those that got corrupted, those that got corrupted in this, in this likeness. These were the ones that got corrupted. These creatures, this creation portion. And in this creation, this created creature that was made, light, like they were, that was corrupted. This is the mark group. So those in glory that are the remnant that will put their necks on the line are coming to bring light and to shed light to this group to bring them back to their original creation, if you will, to bring them back to their light, which is Christ Jesus. Don't believe me? Hold on. We'll get to it. They are the ones that are going to bring the light after Christ comes as this 40 days as the Son of Man. It's so awesome. You see, let me show you where you find it. Remember, you, I, I was just showing, you see it in Mark, three places. Look at that, Mark's discourse. Let's go to Mark's discourse. You see, these, these are those differences that I was talking about for anybody that's new. When you go into the discourses and you see these differences, they're not just because they have levels of levels of levels of understanding and they are purposeful. Luke 13, 19, for in those days, such uh, shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation. See that? Such as was not since the beginning of the creation. Why doesn't it say that in Matthew? Let's go to Matthew 24. It has this same context, right? Affliction such as will not be until this time. Where is it? Look at this. Matthew 24, 21. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. Why wouldn't it be creation? Because theirs is the flesh. Mark's group is giving you insight by saying creation because the creation was create uh, the the creation had the creature created in it which was light and the light is purposed for a time there's that final portion of the light group which is this group right here during the time of seals that will be that great multitude rapture group. It's so exciting. It's so beautiful to see it and to understand it and to track it. But if you're new, feel free to keep listening, but you are definitely gonna wanna go to those intro videos to follow these things and to understand it. 
you see, they fall to all of these things. Listen to what it says. Um, there's a real important piece that that they they didn't even know it. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their woman did change the natural use, that which is against nature. So all the way back in the creation of days, in that light group creation, they were they were changing like they do now. You see, this is all being built up as it was then, so is it going to be. The real days of Noah, though, that's further. That's to the end of trumpets, even. So receiving uh, uh, so the women, men, and receiving to themselves the recompense. Um, and even in Romans 128, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. You see, again, it's the same thing. People thinking, uh, okay, I believe in Jesus. I go to church and I can keep going and, and sinning. You know, somebody's maybe having an affair, going to get hammered every week and not repenting and not, you know, trying to keep away from those things. You have to, you have to work at this, right? You have to dig into these things. But you're going to see, it even talks about, you know, that they, they didn't even know back in that creation. So what you end up having is this Mark group represented by that creation that light portion of creation that were corrupted that that are living throughout this history of the world since Christ. We're all living in Matthew's portion of the flesh, but there are spirit-filled groups and there are light-filled groups. The spirit-filled group is going first. A portion is going to be taken from them and be given light to bring in the remainder of the light group. You see? They were corrupted and they didn't even know it. They were given over to a reprobate mind. They did all these things, the sin and everything else, even though what? They knew God. Hello. Everybody knows of God. The church, even more so. That's why they're that sleeping portion, right? We're going to see, as we've shared before, in Genesis uh, 11, how we've seen these three groups as Abraham is the flesh, Nahor is represented by his brother, which is snorer, which is like the sleeping church or like the world that is kind of sleeping and they're snoring. And then you've got Haran, which are the mountaineers. This relates to the Luke group. It doesn't only mean like 14ers, mountain climbers, but everybody that is like climbing the mountain of the Lord that are spirit filled in Christ. These guys are the asleep ones that need the light lit. And Abraham is related to the flesh. It doesn't mean Abraham didn't have the spirit and so forth, but he was still in faith, right? So he had faith and that was what it was all about. But he is represented by the flesh, which we're now living in their time, which is why we're to lift them up. And they're blinded for our sakes. Let's go to Romans 2. It says, Starting in verse one, therefore thou art inexcusable, O man. Hello. Everybody knows of God. Whether they choose to seek him out and come to understand or just ignore everything. But again, this is even more judgment to others that know him as well. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judgest another, Thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judges does uh, that judges does the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And think thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same. You see, you if if you're part of that spirit group and and you want to be judging this this world that that is being caught sleeping and here we are judging them doing these things that they're judging others for listen to what it says that thou shalt escape 
the judgment of God? Uh-oh. You see, what's happening here? He's saying, he's saying, don't go judging these guys. You see, you guys here in this Luke group, don't go judging my light group. Don't, don't, don't judge them that have fallen into this, that have fallen into this, this image, this, this likeness that was made that they got corrupted in. Don't judge them. We need to save them. We need to wake them up. <clears throat> we need to pray for them. Are we perfect? Of course not. But we need to repent when we catch ourselves in those things. And not be judging them in these things. But trying to lift them up. And at the very least in prayer, which is the strongest way. Because listen to what it says. If you turn out to be doing the same things as them, you think you're going to escape the judgment of God? Oh, well, this probably isn't the same escape from Luke 21. Huh. Let's have a look. It's you seven times. Let's have a look how many times and where this one is used. Whoops. Luke 21, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape the same one. All these things that shall come to pass. Look at this. How about the Hebrews 2 one? Let's go have a look at the one for Hebrews 2. Check this out. Let's go to Hebrews 2, and let's see what it has to say about it. <laughs> Directly tied in, guys. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Why? What's a big deal if it slips away a little bit? Is it really going to be a big deal? Or should we just always give heed to these things that we have heard and make sure we remain in them? For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, you see, who's this talking about? It's going back to the same things in that creation of the light. These angels that got judged for what they did. For if the word spoken of by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward? You see, even those that did that over there, and they were from the angelic realm, and they got their just recompense for their disobedience? How shall we, same word, escape? How shall we pre-trib escape if we neglect so great salvation. Which at the first. Which at the first. Began to be spoken of. By the Lord. And was confirmed unto us. By them that heard him. God also bearing them witness. Both with signs and wonders. And with diverse miracles. And gifts of the Holy Ghost. According to his own will we don't really like that do we <laughs> according to his own will he gives the gifts according to his own will he sends his holy ghost to them this is a something there's a bit of a topic of this of discussion that was brought up in the forum you know there's some things we just don't know they're just god is way beyond anything we could possibly begin to imagine in, in his completeness of understanding. But he'll do what he wants with who he wants, when he wants, where he wants. And it's for his good pleasure. You know, we would all like the gifts or portions of the gifts or some sort of knowledge knowing gift of it. I, I'm excited. I know what mine is, but I know not everybody does. But we all want to, right? But we can't, we can't be fighting for that, right? We can keep praying for it. We can keep seeking it diligently for those gifts. You see? But we can't neglect those things which we've heard and which we know. Or else how will we escape? 
if we neglect so great a salvation, if we neglect so great a salvation, same context, guys. And where is it? With the same word for escape. Hello. That that really kind of makes it. Uh, all right, all right, I get it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, let's finish Romans 2 with this one. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outwardly in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. Okay. So this whole circumcision, we know it's it's not the law, right? We are a Jew inside. It's a circumcision of the heart through the spirit. All right. Romans 4. Romans 4. In Romans 4, we're going to see more of this in relation to, see, what we were talking about, Abraham, flesh. Romans 4, verse 1. What shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found. Okay? So again, we see this context of Abraham and this connection to the flesh. Now, does it mean that Abraham was living by the flesh? No. He had faith. You see, the, the you're, you're going to see the whole storyline as you read Romans. I believe even in here, we're not going to go into all of it, but you see it here in Romans 4. It wasn't the whole circumcision wasn't to hey circumcise and then you're gonna then you're then you're mine and then you're in faith no he had faith and the circumcision was just a sign of it after he already had it it wasn't hey you're circumcised so you're mine <laughs> you know like the way the jews like to like to associate it right that's not how it works it's the faith within and the sign of it was the circumcision that came after okay romans 4 3 for what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Interesting, right? Interesting choice of words that it never went accounted. We've shared this before. It's because the accounted is connected to Luke's portion. Counted is connected to Matthew's portion. It's fascinating. And Matthew's portion is what? The flesh. So here's Abraham being told and being called counted. He's the portion that relates to the flesh in faith, but the flesh portion, which is to the Jews. And when we went to Genesis 11, we saw Abraham, sleeping church, and mountaineers, those climbing the mountain. So we saw Luke, Mark, Matthew. It's so exciting. It's so awesome to be able to see and understand these portions. Right? So I already covered that in Genesis 11. So now, let's go to Romans 8. Romans 8. There's going to be a lot to cover in Romans 8. We, we've covered a lot of it before. A lot of people know it very well. It's one of those most exciting verses um, in Scripture, or chapters in Scripture. But we're going to cover it again here. And we're going to go even into greater detail. You can see the temperature on my laptop that it's uh it's a little chilly here in the nights. It's you know, we say that Calgary here where I live is like the desert of the north. We can get really warm days and then the nights are cold. For Canada, that is, right? But so I was turning on my heat, but it looks like it needs a break. It's okay, it's not too bad. So Romans 8 1. We're going to cover like the majority of Romans 8. You're, there, there's awesome connections. And some we haven't covered or I don't even know if I've covered before. Incredible, incredible connections. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Okay? This is something really, really important that, man, you know, we can talk about the uh, uh, who the Gospels are speaking to. And you can get more people receptive to that, even if they're in the prophecy side of things, 
because it really all relates to prophecy, right? The spirit of the Lord is prophecy, right? So it's important to understand prophecy. It's important to seek in and to understand prophecy. And even though we, we, we start by sharing the differences within the Gospels and the revelation of it, it always leads to the revelation of the years of tribulation. That it's the portion of above and then 14 years, two sets of seven. And when you get to that part with anybody you talk to that looks into prophecy, no matter how experienced they are, that's where you start to pull your hair out and they just don't want to hear it. Yet it's right in your face in scripture. You see, it, <laughs> but they have to understand who the gospels are speaking to. And as they start to, then they'll see that, well, then if there's three discourses and they're all speaking quite different, especially when you go to Matthews and you see that it's not just Matthew 24, it's also Matthew 25. You realize that, okay, well, then is there something going on more than just seven years? And for anybody that's wondered and said, well, I've never really understood how they could fit it all into seven years. Well, then you're also in the right place. So who are those in Romans 8.1 that we start seeing here? Well, in 2 Corinthians 12, 2, this is the picture of the end of days in an overview in this typology. Remember, what was and what is shall be. So you're taking here a little, there a little. You see, that's how it works to piece together these pictures that are filled with typologies of the was and the is to reveal the is to come. And that is the typology and the picture that you get here in Paul in his vision. When he's talking here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 2, I knew a man in Christ. So those who are in Christ are the ones who are spirit-filled. So I knew a man in Christ above 14 years. What is the above? 50 days. Above 14 years. In the body, out of the body, I cannot tell. Okay? And what is it like? It's like a... Harpazo, okay? The word for rapture in Greek. So harpazo, it's like a rapture. So this isn't the rapture that everybody thinks of, like the, the one that's mid-trib. The one that's mid-trib, like you read about in Revelation 12, 5, that's the mid-trib rapture. That is the was caught up. And it's the was caught up group that are the mid-trib that go to paradise. That is the light group that is being saved by those who are portion of the left behind spirit group, the remnant group that are chosen to remain, to bring in the was caught up, to shed the light of the Lord in the seals portion of time. Sorry, give me one second. There we go. So we see it right here. It's not the was caught up. It's like a rapture. So what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Does it mean our, our bodies disintegrate and we go? Does it mean our whole bodies vanish? I mean, what does it mean in the difference that is like a rapture compared to what happens to the second group? So you see, it's those in Christ in the above portion that are the spirit filled. They're the ones going first. They're the Luke group. They're the ones Romans 8, 1 is talking about and a lot of Romans is talking about. But we also know from them, there's those who are willing to put their necks on the line, right? Those that'll be a part of the resurrection of the dead because they put their necks on the line. They never fell for Baal, right? They never bowed the knee. They never worshiped. They never got the image, right? The mark, none of that stuff. They're going to be a group remaining to help bring in this group. But you're going to see this group. The first one is in Christ. The second one is not in Christ. The first one goes to the third heaven. The second one says, I knew such a man. So that such a man means like. So not in Christ like the first one is, but kind of, you know, they, they came to believe. Well, what's the difference? These guys are in Christ. They're spirit filled according to Romans. So then what are these, if they're not spirit-filled, what are they? This is the light group. This is the light group. Again, in the body, out of the body, uh, in the body or out, I cannot tell. 
verse 4, how that he was caught up. See, this is the rapture. Not like a rapture. This is the rapture that people know about in the great multitude rapture of Revelation 12 was caught up, verse 5, or uh, Revelation chapter 7. Where do they go? Paradise. What's paradise? That's the stone, right? The stone thrown at the end of seals that becomes a great mountain. That is what I was telling you about at the beginning when we see at the end of the sixth seal and everybody's looking up and panicking and freaking out. <clears throat> that is him coming with heavenly Mount Zion, coming with paradise, the mountain carved without hand. And if you keep going, you'll see in verse 14, behold, the third time, Okay, Paul is like a picture of Christ in these here. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. So you had a taking, a taking, and the third one, he's returning to them. Pre, mid, and post. And if you don't believe it, go to the apocryphal books. By the way, um, uh, I was talking to um, uh, Damien, his mother's Tanya, and she was the one that had shared this a while back with us. Uh, this is from the 54 book Apocrypha. And I actually, I just bought it uh, yesterday. It just came today. I didn't realize it was such a huge book. I guess it makes sense with the 54 books uh, of the Apocrypha in it. But uh, yeah, it's like over 700 pages, big book. But this is from it. And listen to what it says. You don't believe what it says in scripture? How about a confirmation from an Apocrypha book? As the elders say, then those who are deemed worthy of an abode in heaven will go there. That's the pre-trip, third, third, uh, uh, third heaven. Others will enjoy the delights of paradise. That's the rapture group, mid-trib rapture in the seventh year of seals. And others will possess the splendor of the city. That's when he returns, feet down, and they'll have their millennial reign. For everywhere, the savior will be seen according as they will be worthy. You see, could you imagine that? He'll be seen in all those places at once. Whether you're in the third heaven, you're in paradise, or you're in the millennial reign, you'll be able to see him in all those places at the same time. That's incredible. <laughs> awesome, right? Um, who see him, but, uh, but that there is this distinction between the habitation of those who produce, produce a hundredfold and that of those who produce 60-fold, and that of those who produce 60-fold, for the first will be taken up into the heavens. Hello. Pre-trib is true. The second class will dwell in paradise. Great multitude rapture. Hello. And the last will inhabit the city. And that on this account, the Lord said, in my Father's house are many rooms. It's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Confirmed right there exactly what we've been teaching on for five years plus in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And in fact, almost coming close to six years on this revelation of the 14 and above pre, mid, and post being true. See? So it is those in Christ, spirit-filled from Romans 8, that are the ones going in the pre-trib. You see? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. You see, we're living in the flesh, but what? We're what? But after the spirit. The only ones that are in Christ spirit filled are the Luke group, and they represent the gap theory. And when you go to the gap theory, that creation of that first portion, we see who's there. The spirit of God, for anybody that's newer, the Spirit of God was upon what? Moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God. So those who have the Spirit of God are the sons of God. The sons and daughters, right? The sons of God. That was their portion right here. The Spirit group. The Spirit creation. <clears throat> because there were three portions. Three creations, if you will. In Christ created them all. Christ created them all. The Father gave it to them. Let me show you. <clears throat> Excuse me, in Romans. Uh, sorry, in John chapter 3, I think 35. Check this out. 
verse 35. Actually, let's start in, well, no, it's really right here. In verse 35, the father loveth the son and hath given him and hath given all things into his hand. Hello. This is why in Genesis chapter one, the son is mentioned before the father. Because the father gave it all to the son to create. Son, father, spirit. First two verses of the entire book. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Uh, verse 2, Romans 8. For the law of the spirit... For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus <clears throat> hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. You see, in the likeness, it's not the same word, <clears throat> in the resemblance of sinful flesh and for sin, Condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. See, flesh, spirit, flesh, spirit, flesh, spirit. We're dwelling in the spirit, <clears throat> but we're not, uh, sorry, we're dwelling in the flesh, but we're not living by it. You see, this is why we cannot neglect these things. We neglect and we and we we point it out and we do these things to others and we say them and look at them. We neglect ourselves. How should we then find ourselves worthy to escape? Romans 8 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay, so those who are living by the flesh can't please God. Look what Hebrews 11 says. <clears throat> what does it say about our dear brother Enoch? By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Who's not going to see death? Pre-trib group, hello. And was not found because God had translated him. For before his, translated, his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So if you're living by the flesh, even though you're in it, you decide to live by it, you cannot please God. So to be in the flesh yet pleasing God, you have to be living by faith. You see, faith is what? Not seen. Romans will cover that, right? What is faith? What is hope if you've already seen it? You wouldn't need faith anymore. You wouldn't need hope anymore if you already knew it, if you'd already seen it. Hope is what keeps us going. We want to be Enoch's. We talk about this all the time. In fact, we know that the pre-trib group is the Enoch type that is going pre-trib to the third heaven. And they will go at the same time Enoch did. And that will be at the feast, the true feast of weeks in 2024 period and if it's not 2024 it'll be the next or the next wherever the true year is i believe i've made the point we've proven it there is no next after next year the pre-trib group whatever year it's going to be although i firmly to the best absolute of my ability can show scripturally that it's next year it will be as enoch was and it will be at the true Feast of Weeks. You see, we know this is the above portion. How do we know that? Because next is the picture of the 40 days of Noah. What do we know in Luke in order? It's the pre-trib, the seven days to the eighth of the wedding. Then the 40 days of the Son of Man, which is the picture of the 40 days of Noah. So the bride can't go after the 40 days. <laughs> the bride can't go at the end of the 50 days. The bride is 
the Enoch type before the 40 days. That's why the wedding is before the 40 days as well. Okay, back to Romans. Uh, verse 9. But you are not in, uh, sorry, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You see that? It's almost like this, this light portion isn't, isn't actually brought into anything yet. Nobody can go pre-trip if they don't have the spirit of the Lord dwelling in them. If they are not in Christ's spirit filled, they're not going. But there is a portion coming that is light and that will receive that light just as that creation of days group that has to be brought back. It's incredible. Let's keep going. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Remember that? We've shared this before. Spirit of God was what? Genesis 1, verse 2. So as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see? So it takes you right back to that gap theory creation, that first Luke, that, that first spirit portion, that first creation of 7,000, that two-verse blurb <clears throat> about the creation of the spirit portion. Those who are a part of it are the same ones in the is and the same ones relating to the sons of God. Pre-trib. For you have not received the spirit of, of bondage again to fear. Remember we were talking about that earlier? So who do we know are a portion of the, of the spirit of God and the sons of God? Everybody going pre-trib, but also the remnant portion that will remain to work. <clears throat> and what did it say to them? What did, um, what did it say in Revelation 13? Fear none of those things that will come against you. Remember, I told you, remember that. And we see right here, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So what do we know? There, there, within that group, there's the pre-trib group, and there's those that will put their necks on the line. <clears throat> those that will be part of the resurrection, that Smyrna chap, uh, group, Church of Smyrna group. They're also a part. See, so this is where I keep saying there's, there's an is of this, where we're still living in the is, that we should be spirit-filled and be the sons and daughters of God, living by the spirit, not by the flesh, so that we can be accounted worthy, so that we could be worthy to be that group that could be escaped. And we, we have no need to be living in fear of these things if we're being obedient to living in the spirit. But it also applies to a group of the sons of God, spirit-filled, working during the time of seals, not to fear these things that will come against them. You see? So you can see the is and the is to come in it. <clears throat> the spirit, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. This is the verse I love so much that anybody that says Jesus is the father God as well, they, they really haven't understood this scripture. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, that's the father, comma, and there it is again, joint heirs with Christ. You're going to, if you are in Christ, spirit filled, sons of God, then you're going to be a joint heir with Christ. Do you think for a minute you can actually be a joint heir with God the Father? You better check your thoughts if that's what you think. Because it tells you right here, of God, joint with Christ. Okay? How are they joint with Christ? Well, there's the group that goes, but there's also what? A picture 
of them that are now and those that are a portion that are going to be his is to come remnant seed that we were sharing earlier. And that's what you see here. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. <clears throat> are you ready for this? That we may be glorified together. Who? Those that suffer with them. So we know there's a group of people that do that now, putting their necks on the line all throughout this. But there's also a remnant portion that will be chosen that will be a seed that will be in the is to come end of days portion. And so this is a dual picture here as well. And when we teach on it, we're showing it in the is to come. <clears throat> so those that will suffer with them in the is to come to be glorified together with them. Well, what is this glorifying? We've taught on this before, if you remember. To be glorified with them is what? To be a part of that same resurrection he had. Well, when, are they, when, is, when is this group that's going to suffer with them be a part of it? It's those who put their necks on the line. That Smyrna group during the time of the is to come. The, those Priscilla's and, and Aquila's in the is to come. The, the Luke 24, Luke 21 group that are going to be putting their necks on the line that will be glorified with him together to rule and reign with them in the is to come <clears throat> as co-heirs with Christ. Well, you want to see the word? That you may be also glorified together. It's the Greek word 4888. Kind of fitting, right? It's only used one time. Remember I told you to remember that word? To exalt to dignity in company. Remember that word? To exalt in dignity in company. I'm going to go back and find that word for you. I want you to see it. There it is. Remember that? The glory, very apparent. Remember this, be accounted? Be accounted? Who was the group that was be accounted? It was the group that represented the seeds, right? They of the seeds that would remain. Be accounted in Psalms 22. Well, do you realize that Psalms 22 is part of our chapters to years? And look at where Psalms 22 is. Right smack dab in the time where Revelation 13 is, where this group is putting their necks on the line. Who are the seeds? Who are the seeds? That shall serve him. And it said. From that. Which related to the. Accounted worthy. Which was connected to the Romans. Portion. That this group. That is a part of it. Is the group that would also. Be what? Remember it said those that were the glory. In Romans 1. The glory that these guys were corrupting in, in the second portion of the light. Look at what it says. Dignity. So this group that's going to suffer, that's going to what? Take on the portion of light that the Son of Man is going to give them in understanding when he comes for 40 days that they will carry forth his light during the time of seals. <clears throat> Excuse me, which is why John chapters to years, John chapter eight. We have this picture of the 40 days of the son, son of man, the stones throw. Go and sin no more. And what does he say? Then spake Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. When does it start? Chapter eight. Of John <clears throat> in our chapters to years chart, where does tribulation start? Chapter 8. The light of the world, this group is going to be given that light who spend those 40 days with them. They will receive that light and they will send, send that light out into the world. They will spread that light into the world over who? 
the group of light that got corrupted that will be brought back in, which is the great multitude rapture. It's awesome. It is so awesome to see these things. You're even going to see this wording as we continue in Romans with this light. We can now see who this group is that suffers with them, who will be the ones persecuted, who are the disciples working during seals, who in that glory will also, look at this, look at what it says, to exalt, to dignity in company. What are they going to be doing to this group of remnant workers, excuse me, of remnant workers during the times of seals? They're going to be going after them, persecuting them, killing them, trying to kill them, beheading them. What does it say? To exalt to dignity in company. Who, who has that portion? <coughs> The remnant seed portion. The remnant seed workers. Crazy. Now, uh, continue. Romans 8.18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory <clears throat> which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature... There's that Mark group again. You see, it's that Mark group that isn't aware. The, the, the fallen ones are aware, but that, that group that is snoring, that is asleep, is within them. Is It has this expectation that they're waiting for what? They're waiting for the manifestation <clears throat> of who? The sons of God. They're waiting for what? The manifestation. They're waiting for the light. They're waiting for the sons of God to be lightened. <clears throat> Look at that. Where is it found? You guessed it. Only in Luke, in the Gospels, it is only found in Luke chapter 2. Why do you think that's so fitting for us? Remember when we started this Luke in order? to show the end and to talk about the Jubilee. Luke chapter one is the escape and the seventh to the eighth day <clears throat> when the Lord will then return to start his 40 days, which is a picture of the son of man at his birth, which we know isn't at his birth. The reality is, is, is a picture two months later, right? But that's for another story. We've talked about that before. <clears throat> well, where is this picture of, of the lighting? So here's the picture of his 40 days, the, the 40 days as the days of Noah, while the son of man is here, the picture of his birth as, as the Isaiah 9 picture, which we know from Matthew 4 is really a picture of 40 days, uh, of two months later, not directly at his birth. Thank you very much. I love that one. But listen to what it says. Listen to where it says it. In Luke 2.32, uh, let's start. Let's start in thirty-one, which thou hast pre prepared before the face of all people. Listen to this: a light to lighten the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The world, the non-Jews. A light to lighten the Gentiles. Come and the glory of thy people Israel. Luke chapter two is what. When you get to verse 32, when you get down here, it's the end of the 40 days of the Son of Man. So he was here shedding his light, doing these signs and wonders that we know the Son of Man is going to do during the 40 days. After the escape, after the first attack on Israel, after the he returns from the wedding and he's here then for 40 days as the Son of Man and the world is going to reject him. Just like you read and we've shared a hundred times in Luke 17, about verse 25. It is him in what? The final generation. And he's what? He's going to light his light. He's going to let his light shine, just like Romans 8. And what is he going to do? He's going to give it to those who will suffer 
as he did, who will take part in the glory, in the dignity, in that company at the resurrection at the end to rule and reign with him as co-heirs with Christ. And look at where it is. It's him as the light at the end of the 40 days. And who is he giving this light to? He's giving his light to his workers. He's giving that light to the workers that will suffer with him to be glorified with him at the end. You see, that's why you see this. Exactly where you see this word manifestation, which is to lighten, being only used once in a picture of the end of the 40 days is directly related to the time what? When the Son of Man is gone at the end of those 40 days and that remnant worker group for the final about three days to the end of those 50 will go to wherever it is in Jerusalem, will receive the Holy Ghost, they're light-filled, they receive the Holy Ghost to receive that additional power and authority and they go out from Jerusalem and the 14 years begin. Look at this. It even tells you that this manifestation, which is the end of the 40 days, is the manifestation of the sons of God. So awesome. Here it is right here. Here's the rest of that, that I was telling you earlier, that a lot of them, didn't, they didn't even realize it. All right? For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature, you see, all of this is the mark group. It's all the portion that is that is blinded in not seeing the light. Um, because the creature itself also shall be delivered. Listen to this in 821. Because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. You see, this is the group, the rapture group of the great multitude that is going to be set free. It is going, they're going to be part in liberty. But it's not going to come. That great multitude, that, that greatest revival in human history that people have been talking about for decades or for a couple decades, at least maybe three or four decades. It won't happen until the sons of God, the remnant chosen workers, receive this manifestation of light from the Son of Man. Then they will be part of that liberty at the end of seals. Listen to this, Romans 8.22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. This is another one of those great pictures where we show the duality of this. We know that it's a picture of in our modern day living in the is since Christ until the time of the pre-trib that we're, we're all groaning together. We're just, ah, oh, Lord, let it be so. But what was this also a picture of? This 40-day period of time of this manifestation of light and the sons of God, remnant workers, the seeds that will go out for them to bring in this creature group, which is the mark group, the sleeping group. It's connected to the 40 days of the Son of Man and it's coming to the end of it. Well, what is the, excuse me, what is the travailing and pain part? Exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same thing from Revelation 12. Revelation 12, this is going to be something seen which is probably connected to the stone's throw, which is Luke chapter 21, verse 25 through 28. It's going to be seen before it hits. As people are starting to freak out, bang, that's going to be the pre-trib escape. You're even going to see it in this as we keep going. And then what happens? The escape happens. The seven-day wedding takes place. And the Lord returns during his 40 days, which is the travailing in birth. How many times have we taught this, brothers and sisters? That the words travailing in birth here is directly related to the 40 days of the Son of Man. This is all part of the revelation 
all the way back to September of 2017, September into October. September 8th, 2017 was where this revelation began. That the travailing portion, that, that Isaiah 66, 7 is before she travailed, she brought forth. That's the pre-trib. That's the accounted worthy. She brought forth. And then it says, comma, and before her pain, which means during the travail, she brought forth. That's the 40 days of the Son of Man. So there's a group before the travailing, and then there's somebody before the pain, which is during the travailing. And that is the 40 days of the Son of Man. We have shared on it so much. He is the white horse rider. And wait till you see what I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it out even more tonight. Because this travailing, we've shared this before. You go to the white horse rider and you see the connection to it. We've talked about it before. This is the 40 days of the Son of Man. And it just so happens in this entire context of what we're talking about, about this remnant seed that, that are the spirit, that have the spirit of God, who will be co-heirs, suffer with, and will take part in this dignity as a company that do this. Who the creature, the Mark group, is waiting for them to be manifest, these sons of God, during the 40 days. And then when the 40 days of the Son of Man is gone, they will be the ones that bring about this liberty to the creatures. And look at what it said in 822 of Romans. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together. So we know, like I said, yes, it's something that we're all doing within us now because we just want to be with the Lord. But it is also a picture like the rest of this section is of the is to come 40 days of the Son of Man that's represented by the travail. It's awesome. Verse 23, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. See, we, uh, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of our body. Okay, to which the redemption of our body. Now, if all of this is connected to that pre-trib group and then 40 days and so forth, do you think maybe as it's now saying, but not, um, but not only they, but ourselves also? You think maybe there, there's a first fruits group that's going? Like the first fruits of the Feast of Weeks? Which are the no uh, Enoch types waiting for the adoption to which the redemption. Let's go see where this word redemption is. Let's go see if this is the actual same thing. Well, look at that. Look at that. Only found in Luke 21 28. Let's go have a look. A look. A Luke. Let's go have a look at Luke 21 28. What do you think it's going to be connected to? Turns out it starts in verse 25. What do you think verse 25 is? Revelation 12, 1. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves, the sea and the waves roaring. This is the Revelation 12, 1 actual sign. It's not going to be a sign. It's going to be the actual event happening. Okay, Revelation 12, 1 in 2017 was the sign of what was coming. This is going to be the event. Man's heart's failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. That's the stone's throw. The, uh, on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Who's going to see him? The pre-trib group? Right? And the remnant workers. The whole world won't see him. He's going to be in the cloud. Only those spirit-filled in Christ are going to see him. And when these things begin to come to pass, so begin. So when these things begin to come to pass, the signs, when you see the sun, moon, and stars, and these things happening of the Revelation 12, 1, <clears throat> is when these things begin to come to pass. Then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption 
draweth nigh, or your redemption is at hand. What is this period? The preacher of escape. The preacher of escape to the beginning then of the 40 days of the Son of Man. And where was it connected to? Same context. And it's only in Luke, and not only Luke, it's only in Luke's discourse, which means that much more. Because directly related to the connection in the end of days. Let's keep going. <clears throat> um, this, again, this is the hope stuff, right? For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. See, guys, hope, hope, hope. Am I hopeful like so many others that are still pointing to these fall feasts? Of course I am. I'm hopeful every day. Do I believe it's going to be? No, because of what I've understood. But I'm still hopeful. And we'll be hopeful for the rest of our lives. Could you imagine what happens if you're not? Did you, Were you listening to the rest of the earlier parts of Romans? If we're not, if we're not keeping on top and, and keeping in, in, in remembrance these things that we've heard and understood. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Uh, let's go to 29, because right towards the end of Romans 8 is really good, guys. But 29. Um, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. You see, there is a group of people, guys, who he predestinated. We were talking about this earlier in, in the context of, look, he can do whatever he wants with whoever he wants, where, where he wants, when he wants. And he has a group that he predestinated. And we know their portions. Their portions are revealed in the spirit, the light, and the flesh. Uh, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Um, moreover, whom he did pre predestinate, them he also called. You see, there's a called portion like that saints portion. There's some now, but there's also in tribulation like 13. Whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. You see? Look at this word. There it is. The same group that were part of the glory. And what did it just say? He also glorified them. So he's got a predestined group because he knew them before the foundation of the world. That was that spirit group. They're called, they're justified, and they're glorified. There is, There are people predestined. Let's keep going. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Is it Christ that died? Yea, rather that he is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Now listen to this. You're going to see it's that same group of workers. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Do you realize that in um, in the book of, well, in the Gospels, and we're always talking in this, in, in the Synoptic Gospels of Luke, Mark, Matthew. The word tribulation isn't even used in Luke's Gospel. But it is in Mark and it is in Matthew. It's funny, right? So, who is this group that, that's going to be dealing with this? Well, the entire story is this remnant group. 
this predestined group that he's going to glorify with him. That are, that are going to be co-heirs ruling and reigning with them. What do, they, what do they have to go through? To suffer as he suffered, to be glorified and have that dignity in a company with them. Here it is. Why are they going to suffer tribulation? Well, they're, they're going to be in the mark portion of time. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword? What are all of these? It's all seals. The whole thing is seals. Is this something that is in the is right now? Of course. People are suffering different tribulations and distresses and wars going on. That's the is, but in the is to come, it's all about that manifestation of the sons of God when they receive the light. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all day long, as sheep to the slaughter. Oh, now listen to this. This one, I, 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 I needed to get this one in. Romans 8, 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. <laughs> For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor light, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> what did it call these people? Come on, say it out loud in front of whoever's around you. We are more than conquerors. Conquerors, hmm, sounds familiar, doesn't it? A word used only one time to vanquish beyond, that is gain a decisive victory. But how can we understand where this conquering is connected to? How, you see, who is the context of this? Again, it's that remnant worker group. Those that were the comma and the, the, that were to be a part of the pre-trip. Accounted worthy, but were the be worthy portion that remained to be his seeds, to go out and work and to bring the light. This is them. Who were they with to receive the light? Jesus Christ, of course. They were with the Son of Man here for 40 days. So if they were with the Son of Man for 40 days to receive that light, and, and look at this group. We know exactly who they are. Okay? Yes, we know they're the Smyrna group. We know they're the Priscilla's, the Aquila's. Who are they? Well, they were the two on the road to Emmaus is the typology. This is the group that he has the banquet meal with after the wedding, which we've covered. We've got some great videos on that. And then what does he do with them? What does he tell them? Luke 24, 44, he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You see, we told you this is coming. Remember this word understanding as well? This word understanding is the word for understanding the, the mark of the beast and the beast over in Revelation 13. This word in all of the Gospels, you guessed it. Only right here, only in Luke. Hello. Um, and then what does it say to them? Okay, in verse uh, Luke 24, 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. You see? So there's the is of now, but there's the is to come that they're going to go out to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. Uh, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And we know that this will be about 30 days later. 
So the 50 days, the pre-trib escape, the events of things that will happen, Revelation 12, signs, so forth, the seven-day wedding, the Lord returns on the eighth day after the wedding. He has a banquet with this group. They follow him for 40 days. He is the light. The light is there. It's the portion of time called travail. They are receiving this light with him. He is imparting them and giving them the understanding so that they have the light for which they will be the sons of God manifested with that light that will wake up the light portion in the picture of those from creation that represent the Mark light group that are the asleep world that these guys are now going to go into all the world beginning from Jerusalem to shed that light. This is them. Who were they with? They were with the Son of Man for 40 days, right? They were with the Son of Man for 40 days. And this entire context in the picture of the is to come is about them. Chosen from the foundation, before the foundations of the earth. Called, justified, and glorified. And what are they called? Conquerors. They're, they're more than conquerors. But they are certainly conquerors. How did they become conquerors? Well, it says to vanquish beyond, that is gain a decisive victory. Any of you guys have any decisive victories? I mean, sure, there are some in the is, in the typology, you know, in the, in, in the life, you know, I think of our brother Steve in Uganda, right? Our brother Steve and, and the ministry and, and how they're, they're just spreading the word like crazy. S salvation is happening all over the place. They're being shared and revealed the understanding at the same time. And it's happening within our lives here as well. But this decisive victory as conquerors about a group of people who were with the Son of Man for 40 days receiving his light to be, take, be partakers, being glorified with them, who are about to go into the tribulation with the sword and famine, that doesn't happen until what? After they're conquerors? How did they receive this conquerorship, if you will? Let me show you. And I'm going to end with this because I'm not going to make it a four hours video. Sorry. I'm going to end it with this and I, I'm going to hopefully I'll stick to my guns. God willing, we'll we'll finish it in the next one, because this is a great place to end this one. Revelation chapter six, verse one. Oh, first of all, let's go to chapter five. Remember when we were showing in Daniel the 10,000 times 10,000 standing before him and the thousands of thousands ministering? That they're the pre-trib group, the ones that are there? This is them right here. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11, halfway through. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. This is the pre-trib group. Then you go to Revelation chapter 6, and it's after the wedding. It's now the first, uh, 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 the first seal is broken. And it's the beginning of the 40 days on the eighth day. And it says in Revelation 6, verse 1, And I saw when the Lamb had opened one of the seals. Aha. Maybe there's an understanding to that. A lot of people will tell you that, oh, all the seals are broken together. No, they're not. He's telling you he broke the first seal, but that he broke or opened one of the seals. He opened the first seal. And I heard, as it were, a noise of thunder, one of the four bees saying, come and see. And I saw, and behold, so what happens? The lamb opens one seal, which is the first seal. And then what happens? John hears, as it were, a noise of thunder and one of the four beasts. So he hears, and now he's turning and he's seeing one of the four beasts. <clears throat> so the Lord opened it. He turns, he sees one of the four beasts. And a lot of people say, well, it can't be the Lord. It can't be the son of God. Why not? He opened it. He's now the one going on the beast, the white horse. 
He only opened one, one seal first. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow. <clears throat> this is the one, when you dig into this, this goes to, ta-da, be in travail. Told you. That's, that's the travail from Revelation 12, verse 2. And what else does it say? And a crown was given unto him. Now, why was a crown given unto him? Well, we've shared on this before. Let's go to it real, real quick. Uh, where is it? D -d 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 Song of Solomon. Chapter 3, I think, 11, last verse. Go ye forth, O daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon. Remember Jesus, uh, King Solomon, and a greater than Solomon is here? Well, isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Because in Luke chapter 11, which is about the Son of Man coming to warn for 40 days as Jonah did, in the final generation, which is the white horse rider, who is what? The one receiving a crown, which is the 40 days of the travail as Revelation 12, 2, which is the one who is greater than Solomon, who is Christ for 40 days as the son of man in Luke 11 is receiving a crown as he did from his wedding. And Solomon, it says in Song of Solomon 311, behold King Solomon, a picture of Christ, right? The greater than Solomon is here. <clears throat> With the crown, wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals. If you don't yet see that the Son of Man is the white horse rider, you need to spend more time. Dig into these things. I just, I just spoke and connected for you. You see it in the book, the Ministry Revealed book. Uh, um, this is about the seven churches. This is Ephesus. This is the beginning of the 50 days right here. This is the beginning of the 50 days. This is the eighth day after the wedding, the start of the 40 days of the Son of Man. Okay? And it goes in. They're here through seals and so forth. This is about two and a half years into seals when the beast gets his power to continue 42 months. But what does the beginning of the 50 days start with? The day of Israel's espousals. Oof. Mind melt explosion. The son of man who is the greater than Solomon, as Jonah was, representing the travail for 40 days, as the bow, receiving a crown from his mother that he received on his wedding, is not only all of that, but it says in Revelation 6, 2, and a crown was given unto him and he went forth, what? Conquering and to conquer. Who did he get this? Who, who was with him? When he was going around conquering and to conquer. Who was with him with this incredible ability being great conquerors being vanquishing beyond that is a gain of decisive victory only used one time being spoken of by a group of the sons of god who just so happened to be the ones with them for 40 days while he's conquering and to conquer and the root word of it Ta-da, G3528, to prevail, overcome, to get victory, to conquer. It's the exact same word of the Son of Man who has a bow during the representation of the 40 days of travail, 
who is wearing a crown because he received it from his mother and he's come after his wedding and his conquering and to conquer, he's doing it with those who are with him during those 40 days of travail who are his sons of God who were predestined to receive the glory with him as a company in the resurrection, having put their necks on the line at the end. Come on. Come on. This is awesome, guys. This is all detailed just from being halfway through Romans. I would love to continue it, but I am not. I had a late start, and it is late now. And it's already just over a two and a half hour video, a two hour and 40 minute video. So I am going to end it right here. And we are going to bring it all together, line it all up, finish it all up, bring it right to the end of it. Now I'm going to go into more details than I would have with what I had planned with the rest. I'm going to bring it in probably another full term video, bringing it all together, tying it all together so you can see the is and the is to come of the pre- and the pre-workers that will be chosen to remain as his remnant. And you're going to see it right through to the very last chapter. And not only to the last chapter, but right to the end of the last chapter. It is glorious. It is beautiful. It is the revealed word of God. It is his revelation in the is giving us our is to come in a beautiful book that the people in the is have loved as much as we do and as much as it will be loved by those who are his remnant seed that will be in his is to come. Brothers and sisters, it's awesome. And right about this time, you're going to see these the new videos and these things pop up for you. <clears throat> I'm so excited. You will see some changes in these things, as I said, as we continue in this final year, strengthening the body, preparing a remnant, revealing greater and greater revelations, bringing the connections together, trying to attract more and more and more brothers and sisters into these revelations. Because once it's understood, man, is it ever glorious indeed. I love you, brothers and sisters. I'm praying for you, for your families. I cannot wait to meet you face to face in his presence. God bless you. God bless you all. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.